Greetings, you beautiful spiritual warriors out there. Welcome to my channel here at The Craft of Living. Today I wanted to do a fun and very special reading. We are doing a full moon reading today because on the 30th we have a blue moon this month in August. And a blue moon just means that you have a full moon twice in one month which is quite powerful. And anybody who is familiar with full moon knows that the full moon is a time of releasing and letting go of old patterns. And I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of major events happen in my life that affect so many people. And I thought a little guidance right now would be a good thing, especially uh, since these energies of the planetary alignment are so very powerful right now, there's a lot of shifts going on, a lot of changes going on in the world. Um, and I just wanted to speak on that. So the questions we will be asking today are what is no longer serving me? So we're going to release and let go uh, with this full moon energy. So we need to know what is no longer serving me in this time period? Next, how can I release and let go of these energies? How can I release and let go of these energies? The next question we are asking is, how is spirit helping me as I release these energies? And lastly, what are my truest priorities now as we lead up to the full moon next week? So we're gonna get started today. We will be using the Danielle Noel deck. Danielle Noel, the Moon Child Tarot. So the one we just unboxed, we will be working with. This is the Moon Child Tarot Shadow Work Edition. So in the first question we have here, what is no longer serving me? The second is how can I release and let go of these energies? How is spirit helping me release and let go of those energies? And what are my truest priorities right now? We're gonna add in some angel cards for additional guidance and support, energetic support. And I will leave the links of these uh, decks down below in the description if you're interested. And lastly, we will be utilizing the Sufi Wisdom Oracle for these very trying and difficult times because we could use some, some Sufi Wisdom. So let's start before we get too much into the layers with the first question here is, what is no longer serving me at this point in my life? Now this is a collective read. If this resonates with you, then this is for you. Trust that it is for you and your guides and your spirit and your intuition nudged you to this video today. And if it's not really resonating with you, maybe there's a different video that will resonate with you. Maybe this is not the right timing and you can find a different video. But for now, what is no longer serving us right now? We have the Knight of Swords. I'm going to, we have it in reverse, but I'm going to show you close up while uh, I'll let you look at that. And with the Knight of Swords, it's really, a, I feel, about, because the night is about action. And when he's in reverse, you're not quite sure what action to do just yet. Maybe there's been some events in your life that has pulled the rug out from underneath you and you are no longer clear-minded the way that you used to be. Because the Knight of Swords is very direct. He's very logical. He's very, he's very just yet yeah, very head based. So maybe something happened in your life that just threw a monkey wrench in your logical mind, in your plans, in, in the way that you understood the, how things work in your life and in the system around you. Sorry, I said I was going to do it right side up. Um, yeah, so what is no longer serving me? unblurred here what is no longer serving me so the knight of swords is action like i said before and so when he shows up in reverse you're kind of not sure where where your best opportunities lie and where your best direction 
is right now. And, you know, if things have been shifting and moving in your life and things are not the way they usually logically are, and your logic is being challenged, then I can see how that could cause some inaction, right? You're not wanting to do any action just yet because you kind of want to understand the situation first. But this comes up in the position is what is no longer serving me? And when the Knight of Swords is in reverse, you're, you're sort of, you're brimming with energy and enthusiasm and motivation, but without an effective channel or outlet resulting in restlessness and frustration. What, what is holding you back? Is it an event that happened? Is it timing? Is it a lack of faith? It is, a, is it clouded mind and not sure how to move forward in this? What's holding you back? This can feel like you have very little direction. You're not sure on how to move forward with your decisions. You may feel scattered. You're changing your mind back and forth, left and right. This is when the card is in reverse now just to remind you, but I didn't want you to crane your neck trying to look at the picture. So this kind of scattered thinking, clouded vision can end up really slowing you down, slowing your actions down. And this can become confusing for all involved. This, this is kind of like the monkey mind hindering any action or forward movement that you might be making. The suggestion here is to slow down or risk burnout despite the desire to be involved in everything. Remember, ace of all spades is a master of none. Take time to ground and gather thoughts and concentrate on top priorities. So this is, this is where I'm seeing of what is no longer serving me, of just really not being clear in your, in your vision, in your mind, in your actions. You're kind of you have been thrown off center for one reason or another or multiple reasons. And like I said, it's almost like the rug has been pulled out from underneath you. And that defies logic. You're, you're wondering, you're trying to figure out how come the rug got pulled out from under me? Where did that person came that even pulled the rug? How am I on my keister right now? What am I, how am I going to get up off my keister? How am I going to move forward? Should I even move forward on the same path? Should I change directions? Should I alter my, uh, alter my path and do something different? And while challenges that arise do require pivoting, I encourage you to tap into your intuition on your what you were being nudged to do prior to this to this event that challenged you whatever may have popped up in your life and ask was that an intuitive hit that I got and if you have the answer yes if you've been thinking about this path that you're on for a long time and then someone comes along and yanks out the rug from underneath you I challenge you to revisit that initial intuitive thought and maybe not abandon it because that's the first thing that we go to oh no the rug got pulled out from underneath me i need to abandon everything that i was going and the direction i was going and i say hold on just a minute because if you have been checking in to those intuitive hunches prior to this this shift or change or uh, realization or um, awakening that you have on, undergone you have checked into your intuition and your intuition knew that this this challenging moment or this rug was going to get pulled out from underneath you and what i'm trying to say is your guidance system is not wrong so it might require some maneuvering some shifting some pivoting but maybe not abandoning that intuitive idea or a goal that you had set forth maybe you just have to change it just a little bit so what is no longer serving me? Clouded vision, scattered thoughts, negative thinking that inhibit action. That's not helping right now. Okay, and we, as we move on to the next one, how can I release and let go of these energies? And we have the page of pentacles. So again, um, I will let you see it right side up as we look into this card a little bit more. And with the page of pentacles, let's see if I can get it non-blurred for you. When she's in reverse, because the pentacles have to do with the physical world, the physical reality, your physical health, physical relationships, physical learning establishments. And, and it's all about 
beginning. It can also mean messages to the page, but it's it's beginning. It's you're in the apprenticeship area of it. And in this position of how can I release and let go of these energies, when she's in reverse, I kind of see this as maybe you need to let go of trying to think of the next new money-making idea or the next new venture or the next trying to really you know trying to really figure out that next step maybe you already have it and you don't need to keep reinventing it because with the page of pentacles in reverse it can mean feeling fearful that you're not skilled enough to do what you wanted to do fear and self-doubt this leads to procrastination so you have what you knowing what you have what you need now and the rest will develop as you progress it's almost like the imposter syndrome when when you're when when the page of pentacles is in reverse um this is also can mean maybe maybe you've been overachieving and trying to come up with a bunch of different ideas on how you can move forward with this project but it can also mean maybe you need different planning um, maybe, maybe you've only been thinking about it and you haven't been making the necessary steps to make this a reality. Um, this is, a, this is an invitation to recommit to the actions that are required to, to manifest your dreams and visions. So it's learning from past mistakes so that you can have success tomorrow. And I really do get that, it's, uh, maybe stop trying to wheel and deal on the next new greatest adventure and kind of trust in yourself that you have enough to move forward with the knowledge that you possess already so how can i release and let go of these energies of this unscattered mind and just unclear clouded thoughts and clouded vision inhibiting you from action let go of the self-doubt know that you have everything you need to have and find success on this journey, on this path. Nothing's changed. You're still the magnanimous person you were yesterday before this, this challenge arose in your life. So how can you let go of those scattered thoughts? Well, you can do that by beginning to believe in yourself, knowing that you can do this, knowing that you have everything that you need for success and that spirit would set you up for success. Spirit's not going to set you up for failure. Spirit's not going to say, hey, you should do this, this great thing. You should do it. It would be amazing. Wouldn't you think it would be fun? And you think, sure. And as soon as you stand up to do it, spirit pulls the rug out from underneath you, but you, you, your human self says, oh my gosh, what, why, why did that happen? That must mean I'm not supposed to move forward on this and must mean I'm not supposed to do this. But that's actually, uh, what if it's a test of faith? And what if, you know, you do actually have everything you need and you just need to brush yourself off and get back up and keep going on that plan and that path and believing in yourself, recommitting to your actions required to bring this to fruition. You have everything you need now and you will develop more as you progress. So this can also indicate imposter syndrome and letting go of that imposter syndrome can help settle and s settle your mind from being so scattered. So next we have, how is spirit helping me release these energies? And we have the 10 of swords. I love that for helping us release these energies. I'm gonna bring it up close now. These are all in reverse right now. So it's telling me there's a lot of inner work we, we could be doing right now. So for the 10 of swords in reverse, it's, 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 I, I see this as spirit is helping you by becoming aware of these negative thoughts that you have and negative, oh, if that's not going to happen now. Look, the cir circumstances have changed. That's just pointless now. And spirit is allowing you to let these daggers of negative thoughts, negative thinking, limited beliefs, things that just really aren't true, letting outside circumstances define what you're made of and what you're capable of in this world and slowly helping you let those drop out because we have it in reverse here. So I really love that. It's, spirit might be helping you by 
learning to accept these changes and learning to trust life that there's no such thing as accidents and that these hardships that you've had to endure this difficult ending that has occurred in your life they can only make you stronger and you can just learn from them especially when it comes to uh, honing your brain as your friend and companion instead of your worst enemy and kind of letting those thoughts and thought forms go and spirit is helping you do that by bringing awareness to when you start to go down that negative spiral that negative tunnel and kind of kind of helping you to not carry around those past wounds anymore not letting those past wounds impede your present because spirit knows you don't gain anything by wearing your battle wounds as a badge it is time to heal these old pains and deal with them once and for all, releasing you from the pain of your past. So spirit is help soothing this pain of your past, this sudden ending by releasing these daggers that have, that have uh, come down seemingly unexpectedly and it has brought about an ending of some sort. So spirit's helping by helping you to heal from this event and letting go of those negative thoughts. And lastly, what are my truest priorities right now? And we have the Knight of Cups. I really love that this is the only card that's not in reverse right now. And the Knight of Cups. And I would like to read to you from the book also, from the Danielle Noel book. Um, but first I'll go into my insights and see what I see first. So with the Knight of Cups, it's what are my truest priorities now to embody this Knight of Cups, to have feelings of trust in the universe with an open heart, uh, using your intuition. It's fulfilling relationships, open emotions and understanding. Someone who is in touch with that feminine side and wears their heart on their sleeve. Sort of, sort of like a, a romantic, an altruistic person that has compassion, being led by the heart. The, 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 the Knight of Cups is a very much wear your heart on your sleeve, led by your heart. Never mind the dangers, we must press on for the, for the sake of the heart, right? And they're very inspired, they're motivated by action. You know, they're, they're doing, they're, they're, they're into doing right now. And I like how she's stepping into this pool of water here because you're, you're sort of, you're allowing yourself to step into the unknown, trusting that it is going to be a, a beautiful thing in the end. It's almost like a rite of passage or an initiation into your own emotional well, well-being, basically. And so it's, it's, it's having decisions that are ruled by your heart making decisions based upon how you feel rather than what you think. Even if others can't make sense of your choices and why, your in intuition guides you in everything you do. So I see this as a big shift from the logical, very, very logical Knight of Swords. I'm not going to make any actions until I have X, Y, and Z planned and plotted out. And then I'm going to take this baby step number one, two, three, and four, and then whoop, <laughs> you get flipped over and okay so that's the logical mind that's okay because our most powerful resource is actually our heart because the brain has no understanding of what lies ahead in the future the brain can only see in the present moment and make plans in the present moment and and it's, brain's not even good at analyzing the past brain is that's not the, the the talent of the brain is to analyze the past we try to and we try to analyze the future and we try to do all that kind of stuff but the brain that's not the tool you use for analyzing the past and the future you need to move into the heart if you want really um really good results that feel good to you. So this is, it feels like a big jump going from all oh, logical to the mind, but we are both in action cards here. So it being with the, the first question is, what is no longer serving me? Well, this rigid logic of being only in the brain, only identifying with the human story, and what is your truest priority now? Taking action from the heart. 
learning learning to be in sync with your feelings and emotions not letting them overpower you as you see she's entering this pool of placidness and typically water represents emotions and your uh, subconscious and unconscious and she's entering this placid beautiful clear waters and she's seeing a beautiful reflection of herself she's even seeing something different than is reflected in reality right so when you are able to move into your heart space which is your most powerful resource within your body in terms of electromagnetic field you're able to come to better decisions that are holistically based rather than only in your brain so this includes your heart this is the emotions and everything else moving forward so what is my truest priority right now i'm going to read to you from the author's book on this card while i let you get a close-up of it so the let's see the knight of cups is one of the dreamiest cards in cards of the tarot, embodying an aptitude for adventure and romance that flows directly from their heart. This person will always go above and beyond when it comes to fulfilling their loved one's needs. They can, however, become a bit obsessive or overly sensitive when placing too much thought or worry into the words or actions of others. Despite their sensitivity, the Knight of Cups are extremely passionate, generous, and will always make decisions based on the whispering of their soul. Whether their choices seem logical or not, see we are, we are we're schooled again in, you know, things aren't always going to make sense to our brain. And you know what I have heard from great teachers? When you make decisions that you feel are sparked from your intuition and it makes no sense to your brain, then you're on the right track. <laughs> Um, then you're on the right track and no matter what you do that intuitive hunch that you were guided to do will never ever ever mark my words make sense to your brain your brain will always contest that and try to look for reasons on why you were so wrong and why the brain was so right and the I told you so's and why didn't you listen to me so this is moving out of logic and reason and pure identification with the human experience into that of the heart and the higher realms which has the heart has access to the higher realms and the higher knowings and understandings and remember the higher knowings pretty much always know when the rugs are going to be pulled out from you specifically your guides know what is going to throw you off and what's going to help bring you back to center so Despite their sensitivity, the Knight of Cups are extremely passionate, generous, and will always make decisions based on the whisperings of their soul, whether it seems logical or not. Expect lots of passion, play, and adventure with this type. This key encourages us to trust the sensitive waters of our emotions and the intuitive wisdom that strengthens and nurtures our biggest and brightest dreams. So I really love that of hers. It's awesome. So we are going to see what the angels have to say. We have Ar Archaea Clarity, ooh, which is what we could use right now. Rest, reflect, and recharge. Rest, reflect, and recharge. I'm gonna bring it up close again so you can see. And sometimes we need to rest, reflect, and recharge when the rug's been pulled out from underneath us or we are facing a very difficult challenge. We really need to recenter and hone because our senses are probably on overdrive. You know, our nervous system is probably shot and you know we're probably not going to make very good decisions. This is why they say when big changes happen in your life that are stressful, refrain from making any big decisions for quite a while because you're not thinking right. You think that you're thinking right and you think, no, this is very logical, but actually you're very scattered, right? He was in reverse. You're very scattered. You're not thinking clearly. You think you're thinking clearly, but that's why they say wait. So rest, reflect, and recharge. I think this is beautiful advice, and I'll go ahead and read this to you from the book. Archaea Clarity, whose name is derived from the Latin claritus, meaning brightness, serves on the yellow and gold ray of illumination. Beauty and wisdom with her counterpart, Archangel Jophiel. Clarity, also known as Christophina, being the angel of the sun, helps us remember who we are beyond a physical perspective. She shares, 
The kingdom of heaven lives within you, for you are both goddess and God. Clarity helps us empower both our divine feminine and sacred masculine. And she encourages those energies to come into balance. This requires rest to allow intuitive guidance to flow in and space to express inspired action. She is reassuring you that it is okay to put your feet up. Recharging isn't just an act of self-love, but essential for smooth upward ascension. Invar <laughs> excuse me, invite in Archaea clarity for amplifying inner knowledge, detaching from political, societal, and familial agendas, determination, reclaiming personal power, mental concentration, and memory and shamanic shamanic practices. So I'd like to say this too, if you have experienced a change that has affected not only you personally, but others around you, it can feel downright wrong to feel happy or even rest and recharge because aren't there other people that are feeling worse? Aren't there other people that are worse off than you? Your brain kind of asks you those questions. And my re rebuttal to that is how are you going to be of service to anybody in the state that you're in now and to really think about that and to know okay you know in order to help other people i need to help myself and that requires an act of self-love and self-care and that is what she is recommending here rest reflect and recharge because you're also going to know if you need to pivot on that original idea what that pivot might look like Maybe it's a small pivot, maybe it's a large one, but maybe you don't have to abandon your original plan, especially if it was sparked by intuition to begin with. So this is gonna be an ample time for you to kind of re revisit that. And next we have Archangel Raguel. I don't think I've ever gotten this one. Nourish your relationship. So this is that excellent time, especially if you're going through a challenging, um, time period is to nourish the relationships that you, that lift you up, that help you to feel positive. We're not talking about the toxic relationships or the type of friendships that want something from you and before they give give something back to you. No, no, no. These, this, these are the people that are in your inner circle, the ones that really lift you up where you don't feel drained after you're done talking to them. So Archangel Raguel, whose name reflects divine friendship, serves on the pale blue ray of cooperation and unity with his counterpart, Archie Harmony. Raguel, also known as, uh, I'm not even gonna say it, also known as some, some other name I won't say, is akin to an emotional shepherd. He inspires us to take responsibility and stewardship of our life by becoming aware of the impact of our words, feelings, and actions. Raguel's gentleness helps us heal our relationships and inspires ease. He inspires ease when uncoupling. He shares that ego always wants to be right and the other person is wrong. By coming into our heart, we can rise above conflict and relate to another in integrity, connecting through our higher self to listen, speak, and being, and bring resolve. If you find you can't do this, accept the situation and wait for the fires to subside before making relationship decisions. Invite Archangel Raguel to boost for boosting compromise, compassion and understanding in development of the heart chakra, equality, heart-centered justice, helpfulness, mastering the earth element and acknowledging the brighter positive side of life. So this also brings to point uh, often when we are faced with unexpected endings or challenges or like I said, the rug. You wanna know why the rug was pulled out. You wanna know who pulled the rug out. How did this happen? Why did this? And you know, you're going to come up with your, your reasons and other people will come up with their reasons. And you might go at a head-to-head -head battle of who's right and who's wrong. And really, when you get down to it, figuring out who's right and who's wrong doesn't help the heart in any way. It only confuses your mind more, leaving you with those scattered thoughts. So this is an invitation to figure out where you are like-minded and if you're not like-minded anywhere, then just accepting people as they are without trying to change their opinion or their viewpoint is also part of loving yourself. So that is the two angels that I have for you there. 
So lastly, we will ask our Sufi wisdom oracle. Um, what they have to say about this reading. So first of all, we have willpower. Improve your willpower to reduce your stress level. Ooh, I really like that one. So let's look, in this, look into this a little bit more. And then I will read these ones to you as well. A life-changing moment has come to you in the fire of transformation and is calling you to say yes to love with your full will and conscious awareness. Hafiz is here to free your heart from temptation by guiding you to see the beauty of the beloved. When your heart shines with courageous love, you will have the capacity to override unwanted thoughts, feelings, or impulses. By surrendering to love, you will have the willpower to resist short-term gratification in pursuit of long-term goals. When loving becomes your habit, it draws little, if any, willpower from you and frees up more of your energy for other things. Dear one, you are at a crucial point in your life. It is time to make a choice about your reason for being and what your life will stand for. If you feel that stress and normal self-control have depleted your resources, it is because you only have so much willpower. Let's see what options you have for increasing the pool of willpower you can draw from. This oracle is a guide for you to manage your stress levels by spreading love so you can increase your ability to resist pressure from others to follow a path that is not right for you. Being under high levels of stress means your body's energies is used up in acting impulsively and making decisions based on short-term outcomes. Self-affirmation can help you be more confident and have more self-control when you are running out of energy. And your mantra for this card is, I can manage my stress levels and direct my willpower to follow love. So this can be a very good card when you are stressed out and focusing on um, other people and those that you love may help with that. But I'd like to say it is helpful to focus on other people in expressing your love, but you're going to find the greatest results if you are able to love yourself first. As cliche and as cheesy and as annoying as that is to hear over and over again, it is there for a reason why so many masters and gurus say it starts with self-love, and it really does. So finding that time to care and love for yourself and whatever you may be going through or experiencing is so very important and will probably strengthen your pool of willpower so that you can get through this in a way that is in alignment with your higher self and who you truly are instead of just reacting you are now responding in a conscious way from a higher direction so then we have drunk with love. Let love lift you to freedom. So drunk with love. When life is mundane and waking up in the morning is void of excitement, it means we are pulling away from our dreams. This is when we need to improve our personal lives and make positive change in our relationships. Being drunk with love removes the barriers that have held us apart from others, from the divine, and from the world. Now is the time to focus on love and on giving from the heart, perhaps to rebuild an old love connection or initiate a fresh start. Rumi's message to you is to let go of your self-centered thoughts and begin to see everything through the eyes of love. When you perceive with loving gaze, you become surrounded by energy like a fragrance in the air which shelters you with a pure love such as you have never known before. You will be escorted by a warm, blushing glow that calls you into a community of friends who welcome you into their hearts. So I love that we're getting this too with the Archangel Raguel Nourish Your Relationships. Once you open your heart to such a vision, love transports you into timelessness. You feel a love blessing that lets your imagination lend its wings to lift you into new visions. The quality of your life becomes enriched with great ecstasy and you will be guided into new ways of creating and expressing yourself. 
When you are drunk with such love, you create the moments, create your days, and create an exuberant life. The mantra for this card is, I am opening my heart to let love renew every day of my life in the highest and purest way. I let love make me new every moment. So you can reach this love feeling if you are having difficulties reaching this love feeling through feelings of gratitude. And you don't have to be extra extravagant or fancy in it and look for things that are that are crazy and just it, you can it can be as simple as I love taking a cool shower when it's hot or I love taking a hot shower when it's cold or I love the way it feels when I drink a glass of cool water it feels nourishing I follow the the water as it goes down my throat and it nourishes my body it can be simple like that gratitude doesn't have to be anything fancy or complicated it can be in fact gratitude is 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 best when it is the most simplest if you are unable to reach a point of gratitude maybe you're not in a good space and you just you know what i know that i'm grateful for a lot of things but i just don't feel it right now maybe your anger is getting in the way well then you find a place of neutrality and that is what you focus on you're not trying to be happy you're not trying to be spreading love to the world. You're just getting neutral right now. Can you do that? I think I can when I'm challenged. Lastly, we have celebrate life. Make your life a celebration. And this is, this is so true, especially if, especially if that challenge reminds you how precious life is. So I'd just like to read this to you. Sufis do not celebrate birthdays or wedding anniversaries. They celebrate achievements. They take every opportunity to celebrate even small achievements to encourage each other. It is their pleasure to attend joyful events and celebrate being together. In this poem, Saadi suggests that we celebrate the gift of life itself by being grateful for every breath we take. The Oracle's message is to have gratitude for all you have, whether it is positive and a blessing to you or a negative experience which challenges you. It is encouraging you to pay attention to your needs and to have plenty of fun and share pleasant experiences. There is so much to be thankful for right now. And the more you focus on your blessings, the more likely you are to find yourself on the receiving end of the generosity and benevolence of the universe. And you're not going to see the generosity and the benevolence of the universe. This is my own saying. You're not going to see the benevolence and generosity of the universe if you are focused on what is not going right, what went wrong, why is it going wrong, why did this happen, you know, when, you're, when your thoughts are really scattered and uh, grounded in lower vibratory energies. So when you elevate your frequency, you have access to higher answers. And remember, you can never solve a problem at the same level of the problem. You have to rise above the problem to find a different solution that will actually work. If you try and find a solution from the same level of thinking that caused the problem, you'll never find any long lasting solution. So rising above the problem means getting in a higher vibration, accessing those higher vibratory frequencies that are in alignment with your higher self and benevolent, benevolent energies and beings. So celebrate life. This Oracle's message is to have gratitude for all you have. It is encouraging you to pay attention to your needs and to have plenty of fun and share pleasant experiences. There is so much to be thankful for right now, and the more you focus on your blessings, the more likely you are to find yourself on the receiving end of the generosity and benevolence of the universe. Dear one, the road to thankfulness lies in the flow through your own soul. Gratitude can transform an ordinary day into a day of thanksgiving. Contentment in life comes when you can turn routine jobs into works of joy and change ordinary opportunities into blessings. The mantra for this card is, I am blessed and I thank God for every day and everything that happens to me. I give thanks for the light, for my life, and for my strength, and I give thanks for the joy of living. So if the word God um, 
uh, arises within you a lot of religious wounding, you can switch out that word of God with universe, um, you know, uh, universe, spirit, the ultimate being, cosmos, anything you feel uh, no resistance to, because you don't want to have resistance when you are repeating these mantras. So if you need to replace the word God with a word that feels in alignment with you, then that is going to help this mantra work better for you. Um, so as a recap, what is no longer serving us? These we were going to act, but now we're not sure, and now we're not, we don't know, and now we're kind of, our thoughts are kind of scattered, and they're stuck in a lower vibration, maybe negative thinking. So that's no longer serving us. We need to get out of that. How can we let go of that negative thinking, and how can we let go of that scattered thoughts? We can begin to let go of our self-doubt, let go of trying to wheel and deal and think of new opportunities and new things to try and start, let go of that mm, imposter syndrome and know that you don't have to be perfect before you embark on this journey and that spirit will provide every other resource and talent, gift and ability that you need to acquire in order to get to your goal as you go along and after you make your first initiatory step have to take that first step. So that is how we can release some of that clouded thinking is letting go of our self-doubt, knowing that we are divinely guided. How is spirit helping me let go of this, this scattered mind and self-doubt? Well, it's helping us let go by making us aware of this this negative thinking patterns and these thoughts and beliefs. This There may have been a sudden ending and it's bringing up all these thoughts and all of those thoughts you're finding are, are very toxic and they're not really helping you. And spirit is helping you release that. It's the upside down card. So I imagine all these swords falling out, falling out so that you can begin to heal from these past wounds so that you can begin to come become whole into wholeness. And what is your truest priority right now? Taking action from the heart. Taking action from the heart. Trusting in your own divine guidance. Stepping into that emotional pool with calmness and control. You see, she has a sword in her hand. And I've been wondering, why does she have the sword in her hand? The sword. This is not a swords card. This is a cups card. She is a knight, so she does have a sword. But... I feel this sword is also cutting through any confusion and any emotional overwhelmment. She's in well control of her, her sword here as she enters this body of water. And with that, there's transformation that happens as she enters this. You can see there's lines of phases here, I feel, of transformation as she begins to embark on this journey of an walking in life with an open heart following your intuition and your um, your guidance from the astral planes. See, uh, she has this halo above her with the cosmos that's guiding her. You would not be guided to a dead end and to a dead pit just so that you could writhe around in pain. That is not what your intuition was leading you to. So learning that your path that you're on is what you were meant to be on. May need to make adjustments, may, may need to have some pivots, but trust in that, trust in that your own intuition, that you're being guided in the right place and the right time. It's not easy, you know, it's a lot easier said than done, but you're not alone. You have help. You can ask for help. If you want angelic benevolent help, you need to ask for it. They are only there to assist you if it is within your willpower. So if it is within your willpower to have that help, you may invite it with these angels asking for clarity and you know uh, ultimately your goal is peace in your soul your goal isn't to be right or justified or to judge others as wrong your soul's ultimate goal is peace and love so finding that peace and love with other like-minded individuals and even if they're not like-minded maybe you can find a common ground especially if you love this person and want to continue a relationship with them 
um, whether it's romantic or not, and you you feel better when you're with them and it's not toxic, then you learn to agree to disagree sometimes, and that's okay. It, because what is most important is reaching those higher levels of frequency and vibration so you can have access to those greater answers that you're seeking. Strengthening the willpower, opening yourself to love and to celebrate life. Really love these last three cards by the Sufi Wisdom Oracle here. And I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me. Let me know if this reading resonated with you, if you were able to find value in this reading in the comments below. And I thank you for stopping by and get in that heart chakra. If you cannot find gratitude, get to neutral. That's my advice. <laughs> thank you for stopping by here at The Craft of Living and we'll see each other again next time. Peace.